Hello, welcome to the Sunday School lesson for August 2nd, 2020. I am Katherine Moore, an Associate Minister with the White Plains Baptist Church in Lawrence, South Carolina, where Dr. Johnny L. Johnson, Jr. is our Senior Pastor. Our studies are in the Precepts for Living Urban Ministries Sunday School Lesson Commentary. This quarter's theme is wisdom. This unit's theme is faith and wisdom in James. And today's lesson title is Faith and Wisdom. The devotional reading is from Isaiah 40, 1 through 8. And our printed text is James 1, verses 1 through 11. The keep in mind verse is James 1, verse 5. And it reads in the New Living Translation, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. By the end of the lesson, we will consider the relationship between wisdom and perseverance through trials. We will affirm the value of trials and hardships in making us more wise and productive disciples. And we will pray for godly wisdom by which to endure life's trials and temptations. For background information, the author of this book was James, a natural son of Joseph and Mary Therefore, he was the younger half-brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Same mother, and of course, different fathers. He did not believe Jesus was the Messiah during Jesus' earthly ministry. It was after the resurrection of Jesus that James became a believer. And he became the first chief pastor or bishop of the Christian Church of Jerusalem. The Epistle of James deals with the moral choices of Christianity. Faith is the theme of the book. His writings cause us to understand that faith is the cause of salvation and works are the result of salvation. It is said that James was given the nickname Old Camel Knees because he spent so much time in prayer. And as a result, his wise instructions have been compared to the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and even the Sermon on the Mount. Prayer works. Today's lesson has four outlines. The first one is to the diaspora, rejoice. James 1, verse 1. The word diaspora means dispersion or scattering. James was writing to the 12 tribes of Israel, those that were dispersed or scattered and living outside of Palestine. This lets us know ministry is not to be limited to any one church, denomination, people, or location. It is our duty to spread the gospel anywhere and everywhere. And here was the natural brother of Jesus, who could have risen to fame and notoriety simply because of who he was and simply because of who his brother was. But he humbled himself, and he called himself a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He only wanted to do the will of those he served. There was nothing self-serving about his mission. This was a humility in which he greeted the ones he was writing to. Because the word greeting in the Greek means rejoice. So he was telling them to rejoice, even though you have been scattered and you are under circumstances that would seem too hard or impossible to have joy. 
Which brings us to our second outline. Joy in the midst of trial and difficulty. Verses 2 through 4. Here was the Lord's natural brother writing to spiritual brothers. That is because when we are in Jesus, we are all in the family of God. His message was, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. In other words, count it nothing but joy when all kinds of different trials come your way. This is why the lesson is entitled Faith and Wisdom. James would have us know that God does not just give us troubles or allow it for trouble's sake. But God has a purpose in mind. The end result is a strong character and a stronger faith. We can look at it like the late great John Lewis when he called it good trouble, necessary trouble. Because trials test our faith. They prove our trust in God. It is through trouble, troubles that we become strong. They arouse our spirit and point us to God's word, which makes the foolish wise and lead sinners to righteousness. It is said, whatever exercises our faith, strengthens our faith. We don't know the extent of our own strengths or weaknesses, but God does. It is not his intent for trials or testing to destroy us, but they are to improve us. I ask you, would you want to fly on a plane whose engine has not been tested? No, because you would want that plane's engine to be just right. You see, the trying of our faith works patience. And through patience, we, be, we can become mature Christians. The third outline is the way to wisdom, prayer, verses 5 through 8. James said, pray and ask God for wisdom because wisdom comes only from God. There are people who may know a lot about a lot of subjects. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with education. But having an education is not necessarily having wisdom. We have to be pupils of Christian education. It is divine thinking that leads to right thinking. In the natural, we can't understand or receive spiritual things. And James said, anyone who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. That's good news. Not only that, he will give it to all men liberally or generously. And he will not get angry or criticize us for having to ask for it. He knows the circumstances of life. And he knows that they cause us to be baffled and not knowing what to do or say or when to do or say it. We are to turn to God and ask in faith, not doubting. When I was coming up, they used to say prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. James goes on to explain that wavering faith will not do. And he paints the picture of the waves of the sea that go up and down. They are tossed and driven. So is a person who trusts God one day and the next day trusts in his circumstances. James calls this a double-minded man. And he said that he is unstable in all his ways. He said this person should not think that he will receive anything from the Lord. Because if we are not willing to trust God, how can we expect God to give us wisdom? Our faith must be consistent. Faith is dead to doubts, dumb to discouragements, and blind to impossibilities. The fourth outline is the poor shall be raised, verses 9 through 11. 
in these verses, James turns established thinking upside down. He says, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. In other words, a believer, one who has faith, even if he lives in humble circumstances, is really in a high position. On the other hand, a rich person must realize he will be made low. He is compared to the flower of the grass. You see, flowers are beautiful for a short while. Then they are gone. Jesus, all classes, in Jesus, all classes have a common heritage. Our lives are weak, even when we are strong. But in Christ, we are strong, even when we are weak. There is a cross we must bear. In Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And the disciple is not above his master. Jesus suffered, and we enter God's kingdom through suffering. An unknown author wrote, is there any other way open God except through sorrow, pain, and loss to stamp Christ's likeness on my soul? No other way except the cross? And then a voice steals all my soul as still as the waves of Galilee. Canst thou not bear the furnace heat? If midst the flames I walk with thee, I bore the cross, I know its weight, I drank the cup, I hold for thee. Canst thou not follow where I lead? I'll give the strength, lean hard on me. To God be the glory. Thank you for watching.